Y'all ready? Uh, welcome um, to the lighthouse, to my living room. Um, I'm pretty sure in this particular community of practice that I have not um, showed you this part of my home and um, shared in the chi flow with you and I'm delighted to have these next few mo moments um, really honored. Um, so I've, I've mosaiced together a few forms that are going to help us, yes, transition to finesse the transitions, all the um, myriad transitions that we're holding a big heart space for right now in our lives, but forms that are going to help us um, embody the flow. If, make sure, take this moment to make sure you're on mute. Forms that are going to help us to embody the flow and to embody your own sense of leadership. You know, science tells us that, um, you know, every cell in our body is participating in our mental life, right? So um, we want to have all cells on deck. And that's what I'm talking about when I say embodied leadership, to have all cells on deck. So no matter where you show up, you are thinking with your whole body and you are moving with your whole mind. Um, so without further ado, bring your feet to the width of a little bit wider than the width of your hips. Relax your buttock bones down towards the back of the heels and we'll start with some vertical alignment. Attuning your human organism uh, and aligning, coming into your vertical alignment, your relationship to the center of our earth and to the furthest star in, the, in our solar system. Have a moment of palms facing forward, inhaling wholeheartedly and exhaling out of an open mouth. Inhale, take the arms up and then exhale, ground. Feeling the verticality of the long bones and the legs and the verticality of your spine. Inhale, arms up and exhale bringing grace and dignity into your body. If you've been feeling like you've been living, you know, from the neck up, bringing grace and dignity out of just the mind and into every cell of your body. We'll do this just a couple more times. Feeling a sense of aliveness in the bubbling spring points between all of your toes. Exhale. Good. So, Moving right along, this next form is called, it's self-cupping. Um, it's more of a dynamic meditation, it's less of a form. So with life as it is, um, you know, some days we don't have a lot of energy uh, reserved, which means that maybe we don't get that run in. Maybe we don't even have energy to do something like a yoga practice. Maybe we don't even have energy enough to do something as yin nurturing as a qigong practice. When we find ourselves in days such as that, and we all have these kinds of days, this self-cupping practice is a great way to use the hands at your the ends of your own wrists as healing hands. So what you're doing is you're knocking on all of the doors of life. So I want to articulate before we do the thing, the difference between slapping and cupping. Do you hear the difference between slap and cup? Okay, so you're going to cup create a soft cup with each of the palms, and you're palpating and discharging the tissues and sub layers of the body. You're releasing, discharging any of the toxins that are ready to come up and out and to be expelled from your body. This is a perfect time of the year to be focusing on this expulsion of the toxins so that we can move into the womb of winter feeling lighter and brighter and less dense and less worried about its effect upon our biology and less uh, and, and its effect on our minds so we're going to do the same thing on the sides of the legs have the fingertips pointing back and down self-cupping really listening in to the quality of the sound and then I'm just turning, you don't need to turn. And we're gonna self-cup going down the body, down the length of the legs, past the back of the knees to the ankles, and then back up. Good, and then get your belly, get your belly. This is similar in many ways to the tapping that we do in the head and the neck and the 
chest, but here we're getting the whole body. So get this, get the whole trunk. Expelling any of the toxins that need to be released and powerfully, but very gently, using your own autonomous hands to create healing in your body, to create movement. Good, and then release. So this next form is of such a beautiful form, such a yin nourishing form. This is called showering chi. I'd like you to just watch for a moment and then we'll do it um, on repeat together. So on the inhale, you're gonna take the arms up to the level of the shoulders. Exhale, rotate the palms then to face the sky with a deep bend in the knees. You're releasing to the pull of gravity. Inhale, take the arms up. And then exhale, ground the energy down. So you're really sending a lot of life force energy down into your roots. When the roots are strong, we need to fear the wind and the wind is no doubt blowing. So after this, let's do it together. Showering Chi. Inhale, take the arms up to the level of your shoulders. Rotate the palms to face the sky, elbows in towards the side body, bend the knees, surrender to gravity, hang the head back and the shoulders down. Inhale, take the arms up and then exhale down. Inhale, exhale. your fingertips are conducting the chi and opening up the terrain of your heart to the sweet essence of silence. This is all about quietude and stillness, a sense of place. Stillness, silence, it's not something that we need to produce rather to recognize it as a most loyal and constant companion, silence is. And in fact, your relationship to this inner silence is one of your greatest intelligences. It is part of your embodied leadership skills to take action inner silence. One more time in the showering chi, my friends. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. And exhale. Beautiful. So, I'm skipping any kind of wu way in between the forms because I want to give you the most complete practice possible and honor these moments to their fullest. This next form, another beautiful form called Swimming Dragon. So your arms are going to become those of the dragon. But what I really want you to feel into in the dance, in the quiet space, and in the embodiment of it is this drawing in of light into your core, bringing light into your core so as to be fully, undeniably, penetratively ready for the winter season. Watch, I'm gonna show you and then we'll do it together. Actually, gonna walk forward so that I don't hit the shoji screen. So, just a few quick articulations regarding the technique. As my arm goes back, I'm twisting on the axis of my spine as the arm makes this big orbit, and I'm looking to the fingertips. 
This is creating a big rinse, energizing, detoxifying, purifying, and activating rinse in all of the life organs in the life gate of the lower back body. So be sure that you're twisting and looking. Take the stretch all the way through the eyes, okay? So bring the hands to the lower Dantian. Find the ball of energy here. And then lift the energy up a little bit to the third energy center here. Take the left arm back. Begin your swimming. And then the right arm back. bringing light into your core. It's a kind of nourishment, tonifying your yin energy. Bringing light into your core. It's just as important as eating good food. It's just as important as keeping right company. It's just as important as practicing right speech. Our relationship to energy. Energy makes movement possible. Movement makes life possible. So we know that even the static and seemingly lifeless things in our environment, when examined at the level of the subatomic, are in fact very condensed moving energy, condensed moving energy. So we can conclude, you know, that life force is providing the energy for the building blocks of the universe. Know this movement by heart, not just by mind. Know it by heart. See if you can now close your eyes. Know it by heart. Know it in the rapturous, formidable inner terrain. Trusting in the known and the unknown because there is this reserve, this inner resource of life energy. We're gonna take it one more time in each direction. All cells on deck. Embrace opposite hand to elbow, and then take the energy up, shower of chi, and down. Pause in this moment of deep gravity here. Relax the shoulders, relax your tongue. Your tongue has a huge role in the way in which your face is either expressing grace or feeling stress. Relax the tongue, inhale huge here, still holding this gravitational moment. Inhale huge through your nose, please. Spread the fingers and then exhale out of an open mouth. The simple action of exhaling out of an open mouth is remarkable for reducing the experience of, of stress in the body. So moving right along, you can have a metabolic moment while you watch the demo. I'm gonna take a really nice wide stance and this is called moving like a river. Rumi, said, move the way love makes you move, not the way fear makes you move. And when we move like the river in this form here in a moment, we, we become the embodied expression of the organic revelation and of loving awareness, okay? There's an absence of resistance. There's an absence of contraction. Um, it's all about continuity. So be a student, be a steward of the flow in this next um, form. This is also another big kidney medicine form because as we transition through the oscillation, there is a quick freeze frame inside of the flow. There's a quick freeze frame that's rinsing out the kidney energy. Okay, so try this with me. It's never about what it looks like. It's the art of disease prevention, it's the art of longevity, it's the art of energy. 
energy that makes movement possible, movement that makes life possible. I'm gonna take it even deeper. See if you can take it a little bit deeper too. Feel a levity in the arches of your feet. Moving like the river. Now slow it down. When I slow it down, that's when I know it by heart. I can feel all the filamental, nuanced iterations. You continue to slow. Once more, please, in each direction. Moving the way love makes you move. So when I use the word love in this context, in the context of awakening, in the context of community, of course it's never about romantic love. Of course that could be one face of it, right? But it's about unconditional, impartial, revolutionary love that allows us to be practitioners of our embodied, all cells on deck, embodied leadership. So bring the feet back together to the width of the hips, not touching, but to the width of the hips. This is, uh, we love tiger in this community. So this is one of the tiger claw forms. And it's, there's no linearity about this tiger claw. A lot of the tiger forms are very um, geometric and piercing, but this is very much about yin. And that's really what I'm um, hoping to impress upon you in today's flow is this nurturing, fortifying frequency and flow of yin in the core body. Have a look and then we'll do it together. So I'm going to lift. I am creating a soft curvature in all of my fingers, which represents the tiger. And then I'm going to open and lift and open. Lift. Do allow this kind of oscillating in the head and the neck, so important for the connectivity of head and heart, of course also of hands and hana. So create the, the tiger claw, lift, open to the left, come to the lower dantian, up to the heart, up to the head, and then twist to the right and open. Such a simple, complete form opening up through the bubbling spring points in the feet. Feel the flow, the movement of life energy in your roots, in your root system. Not just a couple of little gangly roots down there, but an entire system. So when we first started working together last fall, I was introducing these ideas of diagonal force. So when we start really befriending our yin energy, then it becomes a thing of intersectionality. Listening at the level of the crossroad every time, every great moment of turning. Intersectionality. Couple more. Embodying the factors that are allowing you to either increase or decrease. Action, attitude, increase or decrease. Knowing what is coming and knowing what is going. This will be our last one. Beautiful. Bring the energy to the lower Dantian. Let there be some energetic space there. I hope you're feeling really warm and alive. 
This next uh, form, it's awesome form. It's called spreading the, fret, the feathers, spreading the feathers. So this is very good for us right now in our virtual workaday world. Um, you're going to watch here. This is very, very good for any kind of carpal tunnel syndrome um, or syn carpal tunnel syndrome related disorders in this part of our anatomy. Um, so you're going to also be very gently stretching through all of the subtle connective tissues. Again, let it be a, a moment, let it be a thing of intersectionality. So I'm going to reach the feathers out and reach the wings and then spread the feathers. So I'm just going to demonstrate on one side. I'm dropping my right ear towards my right shoulder, dropping the shoulders down, and then I'm going to just softly rock my head back and forth. It's amazing how something that looks like a whole bunch of nothing is doing so, so, so much good work on the inside. Be a conductor. Take the life energy out from the light-filled core, your light-filled core, out of the heart and all the way through to the ends of the extremities here. Have the inner lines of the feet parallel. Have a smile in the heart that's maybe even also softly visible on the lips of your face. Spread the feathers, deep diagonal downward, feel the pull of gravity through the, to the pads of all of your fingers. Now drop your right ear. Push the left middle finger further left as you drop the right ear deeper down. Now drop the head back and forward. Pull gravity through the legs. Check in with your breathing. Opening the doors to the wild world within yourself. Listening to the inner contract that you have with your breath. Lift your head please now, back up to center. Mm, what kind of amendments do you wanna make in that contract that you have with your breath so that every inhalation is an adoration of the infinite in your finite form. Drop the left ear down shoulders down spread the feathers push the right fingertip further right drop the left ear a little further down drop the head back and take it forward a series of small perpetual elongations that are restoring liberation in the tissues of your body to your lower dantian, holding this ball of chi. Do you feel the aliveness in your hands after that form? It's a remarkable form, remarkable. I wanna give you one more form. This is called nourishing the kidneys. This is a beautiful, um, beautiful form to befriend, okay? So watch. So what's happening here behind my back? I've circled my hands back, so I circled them back, and then I placed the hands directly over the kidneys, lifted up a little bit, and then relaxed. Your kidneys <laughs> respond optimally to this kind of um, loving kindness. This is a meta form, okay? So I'll face you for the sake of visibility, everyone now. Lift the hands up to the level of your heart. Rotate the palms to face away, softly push the chi. Now bring the back of your hands to face each other and open, part the waters. And bring the hands with fingertips down over your kidneys. 
Knees are still bent right now, but go ahead and start straightening them. Pull the shoulders down, drop the head back, and then lean back from the area behind your heart a little bit. Feel your kidneys literally being held. Your kidneys are being held. They're being supported by your own healing hands. Now neutralize, come back up, and bring the energy back to the front knee. Inhale, up. All cells on deck. quote from Elizabeth Gilbert, who wrote that amazing book, Eat, Pray, Love. And she said, never forget that once upon a time, in an undefended moment, you recognized yourself as your friend. I think this is an important bit of lighthearted guidance for us as we ready ourselves for the season to come, to recognize ourselves as our friend. Oh, it's boundless, the discoveries, the creativity, the expansion, the innovation, the quiet that can come from that. Opening. One more, please, as a community. Feel, feel everyone practicing this together. Your awakening and healing is contributing to everyone's awakening and healing. Great news, this is good news. your lower dantian. Conjoin the tips of the thumbs and hover here. Have a soft bend in your knees. So in all of the integrative practice gatherings that we've been having for the past couple of months or a couple of weeks rather, we've been taking a triple bow, a triple bow to each other. The first, uh, and th you know, this is a way of honoring this triple bow a way of honoring our diversity as being, um, as being our strength. So a bow from the country of India, the Tatvam Asi, that in looking at another, that we see one's self, I am that, you are me and I am you, it is a, we, not me, kind of a bow, tatva masi. And from Africa, Ubuntu, I am because you are. You are because I am. We are because we are here together. I am because you are Ubuntu. And from Central and South America, there's Inlakesh, you are my other, you are my other, I am your other, we, not me. Take this last moment to feel our community. Thank you for being in this community. Thank you for taking these few moments to steward the flow and to deep in your relationship to your own unique expression of embodied leadership. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Namaste. Namaste. We'll pass the, pass the mic back to everyone. I hope you feel energized. This is actually a great time of day 
to practice Qigong um, any time of day, of course, is good. But, you know, first thing in the morning, in those early um, Amrita Vela kind of hours, just before dawn, when the angle of sun of the sun is quite right, um, that's a great time. But this sort of four o'clock hour is also another, at least in this time zone, is another really, really good time to be in the chi field. So, um, so thanks.